Commercial fisheries can be really tricky venues to crack during the winter months. Well, there's lots of things that you can do to your bait, feeding, and your tactics to get the most out of your sessions when it is really cold like this. We've come to Barson Lakes today, a really popular venue for commercial feeder fishing, and the weather conditions are far from ideal. Typical winter, really. We've had a lot of overnight frosts, an insane amount of rain, which means that the water is absolutely chocolate. It's really coloured up, and that signals to me that the priority is going to be the smell of my bait and my feed. Where if the water is a little bit clearer, I'll be thinking visually. So I want brighter hook baits, normal pellets, but now I'm going to run you through the baits that I'm going to use to tackle Barson today. Just made my first cast, my trap's set, and I think it's a great opportunity to run you through the bait I'm going to use to attack Barson today. As I mentioned before, we've had loads of rain, which means the water at Barson is really coloured. It's absolutely chocolate. So I want to make my hook bait and feed stand out as much as possible. So how am I going to do that? Well, I want to make it as smelly as I can because the visual side of things goes out of the window because the fish can't see your hook bait and your feed. So today I've chosen to use the 2mm activated coarse feed pellets. These have got a really strong meaty smell and I think that's going to help them fish home in on my hook bait and my feed and hopefully catch them. If the water was a little bit clearer and kind of normal conditions, I would use the cell 2mm activated coarse pellets because that has got a bit of a sweeter smell and I feel like that will give me a better chance of catching because it's more suited towards those conditions. But to give my pellets even more of a meaty, smelly edge, I've squirted quite a lot of the activated sticky syrup. I really like to use these sticky syrups, there's quite a few in the range, but I really like to use these to give my pellets that little bit of an edge. And you might be asking, why would I use pellets on a winter day when it's really, really cold? These fish, skimmers, carp and F1s that are typically in Barston, they absolutely love pellets. They see them all year round and those are the perfect choice for me for hybrid feeder fishing, method feeder, they absolutely love them. But say the water was a little bit clearer, it kind of mirrors what I said about the pellet choice, I would choose the cell sticky syrup. This gives the pellets even more of that sweeter smell and it makes them a little bit stickier for moulding around a hybrid or putting in a method feeder, stuff like that. Well. My first cast, took about 15 minutes this one, I think it's a, either a skimmer or a bream. Usually you catch your F1s and carp in Barston quite early. Oh yeah, it's a nice, nice bream by the looks of it. Just on a large hybrid and a pepper tuna wafter. Quite a good stamp bream really. Hold him up for you. Really good weight builders these are. Pound and a half, two pound, ten or so of them, you're in really good start and then hopefully follow them up with a few carp and F1s later on. Get her back in. Another bait I would not go to a commercial fishery without is ground bait and my choice for today is sweet marine. I absolutely love this. I have been involved in the development of this ground bait and I've loved it since day one. It's absolutely brilliant for skimmers, bream, F1s and I have caught quite a few carp on it to be fair. And all I've done to mix it today, I've got it in my bucket, mixed half a bag of it, added a little bit of water, give it a drill, drill around. I always like to use a drill when I'm mixing my ground bait because I feel it evenly distributes the water throughout the ground bait and it makes a nicer mix to be fair. So do not go to a commercial without this ground bait. It's an absolute winner in the winter. Next up is hook bait choice. And my go-to winter hook bait has to be the 8mm dumbbell wafters. It's quite a few different colours and smells in the range, but today I'm going to choose the tuna one. And that's simply because it's got the smelliest smell, if you like. It's got a really pungent, fishy smell. And I think the fish are going to really home in on that. But I have got a bit of a shorter line, which I'll run you through in the tactics side of this video later. I have got some of these new little prototype mini wafters there. These are a 6mm size. These are the cell flavour. But hopefully catch a few skimmers, maybe a cheeky F1 on that too. But yeah, that's the bait side of it covered. Let's get on to the tactics. The next cast. I've had to wait 15 minutes this time. And it's looking like it's another skimmer. Decent fish to be fair, but like I mentioned before, I think if you have to wait any longer than sort of 10 to 12 minutes, you, you can bet any money it's probably going to be a skimmer hanging on the end. 
with a nice weight builders and like I did mention before I, if you catch say 10 of these two pound fish gives you a really good chance of building a good weight because the best time of the day is yet to come for carp and F1s which are your real match winners if you like a bit smaller than that pound or so pound and a half but again that activated two mil pellets that tuna up bait working really well lovely little fish let's get him back tactics for today's session couldn't be any easier i'm going to fish in the feeder long and short hoping to catch a few skimmers and an odd f1 short and then hopefully a few carp and f1s on the long line so i'm going to be fishing the hybrid feeder today this is my favorite feeder for this time of year and to be honest it covers 99 percent of my commercial feeder fishing it offers the perfect presentation and i'm going to show you exactly how to load it now carp aren't playing ball yet fingers crossed it's going to go around it's out there now set that trap so i'm going to quickly run you through exactly how i've loaded the feeder there's quite a few different ways to load the hybrid feeder but i've come up with a really simple but very effective way and it gives me the most confidence because the feeder could potentially be sitting out there for up to 30 minutes at a time so you need to be confident when it's out there so i'll quickly run you through it starting with the hook bait as i mentioned before i'm using the 8 mil dumbbell tuna wafter i've got a little bayonet on my hook i'm using a 10 qm one so i'm going to push the bayonet through the wafter they're really nice and soft but durable enough to stay on the hook it's really really nice i've got a little tub of water there i just always like to check my wafters make sure they are wafting and that's sitting perfect. The hook's flat, but the hook, the hook bait is wafting nicely, as the name suggests. So that's perfect. So I know my hook bait's right. So now to actually load in the feeder, I'm going to put my first layer on. This is the most important layer, in my opinion. When I'm winter fishing and leaving it out there for a long time, I like to put this first layer on really hard. I mean, like making a paste around the base of the feeder, pushing as hard as I can with my thumbs, giving it a really good firm press, you can't push it on hard enough in my opinion for this layer because I always like to have a little bit of bait around my feeder when it's sitting on the bottom. If I put on that, that on loosely, just thumbed it on really nicely what you think would work well, it could come off on the cast or it could come off, break down when a few fish come around it. But if I'm leaving that out there for a long time, it's going to sit there and I know there's going to be a little bit of bait around my hook length. So I like to put the next stage, I like to put my hook bait and hook right in the middle of the hybrid like that so it's sitting out nice and protruding the first thing that the carp's going to get to when it's coming in get attracted to all that smell of the activated pellets it's going to break down it's going to sit on the bottom the pellets are going to break down my hook bait's going to be right in the middle of that feeder of that firm pressed base layer that's the most important part because that's always going to stay there and that hook bait is going to be right in the middle so the next stage is to put a nice little base around my hook I always like to put it around my hook and then give that a good firm press because it almost traps the hook in there and keeps that hook bait right in the centre of the pellets and the feeder. It's all like a little trap waiting to be sprung. So that carp, as soon as it comes near it, sucks it up and instantly you've got a bite and you're into a fish. So I'm going to give it a really firm press of that hook. Then I'm going to cover the whole feeder and hook bait and the next layer of pellets. So I've got that nice little ball of pellets there and so now I'm going to give it a good firm squeeze, give it a good squeeze. I'll prepare my pellets, in my opinion, perfect. They're nice and, nice and soft and spongy. So I think if you've got your pellets prepared properly, it doesn't matter how hard you actually press it, in my opinion, because it will break down exactly what you want it. So I'm going to give it a good press so it doesn't come off on impact because I am fishing out quite a long way today. So then pellets can actually come off if you haven't got them pressed down really, really firmly. So that's the feeder ready rocking and rolling for the next cast well the carp don't seem to be playing ball quite yet only a couple of hours in and i've had several skimmers now but it's typical bastard you have to sit on your hands and be patient and just wait for them carp and bigger fish to rock up so here's another bream just to add to the net
has turned into a proper winter session now. It's absolutely chucking it now. And one essential item to bring with you when the winter, when you're doing this sort of feed of fishing, is a flask. This is an absolute lifesaver. When you're waiting for a long time for bites like we have been today, this will really come in handy. It's been a real winter session today. Rock hard fishing. It's been raining. Oh, it's been absolutely horrendous weather conditions. The temperature is freezing and the water colour is just getting more and more coloured. And the carp just haven't played ball today, unfortunately. I've had quite a few skimmers, to be fair, and if it was a match, I'd have concentrated just on the skimmers and bream that were in my peg, because they were the fish that were obviously feeding. But make sure that you target two little areas of your peg, because that gives you little different options. So whatever the match or pleasure session throws at you, please have a good day. I hope you've enjoyed a few of the tips I've given you. I'll see you next time.